Today I am sharing a few Halloween DIYs that you're actually going to want to make. I'm Allie and welcome to my channel. As I mentioned, we are doing some Halloween DIYs today and these are gonna be some really, really fun projects. I wanted to make sure that these were projects that you wanted to make for your Halloween decor that really aren't spooky or anything too over the top. These are such simple DIYs to make that are also very aesthetic and on trend. And this video is also part of a really fun collaboration which I will mention a little bit later. So let's hop into this first project. Starting out with this medium-sized faux foam pumpkin, but you could actually use a real pumpkin for this DIY if you're looking for a painted pumpkin idea. And the first thing I did was mix up some black and white to make this medium shade of gray, and I painted the entire pumpkin. It took about three coats of the paint for full coverage, and I made sure to let it dry really, really well in between. Then using some plain white acrylic paint, I painted a large circle on the front of the pumpkin. This is creating a moon shape for the design that we're making. And it took three coats again for this to completely cover and I made sure to really let it dry in between again. I also decided to paint the stem of the pumpkin with some black acrylic paint. Now this part is completely optional, but I remembered I had some glow-in-the-dark paint in my paint stash, so I added on two coats of the glow-in-the-dark paint on this white circle because I thought this would be kind of a cool touch to make the moon glow. With all of the painting parts done, you're going to need a sheet of adhesive-backed felt, and I hand drew out little bat shapes. You could also go online and look up a bat clip art image, print it, cut it out, and make a stencil. I kind of just winged it because I wanted that like organic type of look instead of a very perfect bat shape. And I also drew a couple stars in various sizes as well. And then I just used my regular scissors to cut out all of the shapes. Then it was on to the fun part, placing all of the bats and the stars on the pumpkin. I just made them surround this little moon shape here. And the reason I decided to do felt instead of cutting out paper or just painting the bats on is I just thought they would bring in a really incredible texture and almost create a sense of depth because of how deep black the felt is with the bats. And I am just so in love with how this painted pumpkin turned out. As I mentioned, today's video is part of a collab with these wonderful ladies that you see on the screen right here. All three of us are making Halloween DIY videos. I've linked both of their videos down in the description box. Make sure you go check them out if you're looking for even more fantastic Halloween DIY ideas. Now let's move on to the second project. Now let's do a dollar store project using these two glass candlesticks. I gave them a coat of ultra matte black spray paint. Once the spray paint had dried, I went in with some white acrylic paint to paint on this spider web detail. I love these Dollar Tree candlesticks because they are reminiscent of a spider web shape, so they are perfect for this project. And now for this candlestick, I put the spider web design all the way up the entire candlestick, but ultimately I decided I did not like the look of this. So here's what I did for the second candlestick, only putting that spider web design at the base of the candlestick. And I ended up just repainting the other one to make it look exactly like this. Now I also have some Dollar Tree taper candles that were perfect for this project because they're affordable. You get two in a pack. And my idea was to take these little rings that were also from Dollar Tree and make these spiders look like they are crawling up the candles. Now I found hot glue was the easiest method to apply the spiders, but you do have to be kind of careful because it is finicky because of the wax. The wax doesn't make the hot glue want to adhere too easily. But if you get the right combination where the candle wax melts and the hot glue kind of molds into it, the spiders do stay incredibly well. So just have a little patience during this part. But this was so simple and easy and the effect is awesome. Thank you. 
Now let's make a fun Halloween rug for your front door. I picked up this doormat so inexpensively at Walmart. I think it was under $5. And then I'm gonna be using my Cricut for this project just because it's gonna make it a bit easier. However, you could also use stickers to create a stencil or make your own stencil by tracing out letters and cutting them out. So there are other possibilities that you don't necessarily need a Cricut for. So I'm using some removable vinyl because that's what I had in my stash. If you are doing this project using a Cricut, I do recommend using their stencil material because I think that would work way easier than what I'm doing here. But I'm making this really cute home sweet haunted home design and I'll be sure to link that in the description box in case you want to recreate this exact pattern as well. And after I had all of the pieces cut out on my Cricut, I'm doing an inverse weeding to take out all of the letter shapes because we're making this into a stencil. So you actually want the background shapes to be what we're gonna be using. Now I will admit this was a little bit challenging and I probably should have used transfer tape for the first piece as well, but I wasn't sure if that would work since this is removable vinyl. So the vinyl is not gonna really stick very well to this rug surface, but I was able to peel it off the backing sheet and then just stick it onto the rug and then use this little scraper tool here to press everything down into place and also placed back in the little details that came off when I tried to peel up the sheet. Now for the bottom piece that said haunted home, I did have a little bit of trouble with this one and peeling it off the backing sheet. So I did go in with some transfer tape, put that over top, peeled it off the backing and then kind of laid it down on top of the rug and very carefully and slowly peeled the transfer tape up and it did work fairly well. So I was very happy with this result. So I recommend using the transfer tape method. And then I did have to go stick back in the little details for the O and the D. Next, I'm going in with some scrap craft paper. You can use any sort of scrap newspaper or regular paper that you have to mask off the rest of the rug. And I did want to leave a little stripe on both ends of the rug just for an extra detail to make this look like a welcome mat. And that's of course completely optional depending on what you want to do with your rug. And once I had all the parts of the rug that I didn't want spray painted masked off, I took it outside and gave it a really solid coat of spray paint. And I found the best way to do this was to make sure you held the paint can at a 90 degree angle the best that you could. That way the paint would lay flat onto the surface of the doormat versus getting underneath the stencils that you made because the stencils do not stick perfectly to the rug surface because of how textured it is. I let that spray paint dry for a few hours and I was able to remove the stencils and there were a couple mistakes where the paint bled through and I was a little bit disappointed about that. But in the end I decided it's sort of cute and adds to the handmade spooky vibe of the rug. So I sealed in the designs so that way it wouldn't rub away when walked on with some clear satin finish spray paint. to this point in the video if you're still watching and enjoying what you see here don't forget to give this video a like it really is the best way to help my channel grow and help this fun video reach more and more people now on to some simple and affordable wall decor. I picked up these three shapes from Michaels. They were less than a dollar each, and I thought they'd be perfect for this project. And I also picked up these little spooky elements from the dollar store. And the first thing that I did was take those creatures outside and gave them a couple coats of this gold spray paint. Now this is optional with these little wood plaques. I removed the twine hanger just because I preferred to not have them for the arrangement that I'm going to do. And then I just went in and painted all of them with some matte black acrylic paint. This part is completely optional, but because of a previous thrift flip, I have all of these little corners that are for like scrapbooking or something like that, that I bought off of Amazon. I'll be sure to link them in the description box. And I used my pliers to bend back the little tabs that are meant to make them fit around photos or like book corners. And I was able to bend them back and then use some hot glue to stick them to the corners of these two, both the rectangular and the square shaped plaques. 
I really, really liked the finish that these gave. I think it adds a little bit of an extra spooky kind of vintage element to these pieces. Now for the hexagon one, obviously you can't use corners that are at a 90 degree angle. So I'm using one of my favorite hacks, which is using some simple brads, cutting off the backs of them and then hot gluing them down to the corners. My original plan was to use this gilding paint, but, but I could not get the lid apart no matter what I tried. So instead I decided to use some antique gold Robin Buff that I also had in my stash and this worked just fine. However, the color wasn't exactly what I wanted because it didn't really match the corners on the other two pieces, but oh well, it at least did the job. Then once the spray paint on all of my creatures had dried, I glued them down into the plaques depending on how I wanted them placed. And because I wanted a little extra detail, I'm using some antique wax that I got at the craft store. I'm rubbing that onto these creatures and then quickly wiping it off with a paper towel so that the antique wax only fits in the little nooks and crannies. And I really like the depth and detail that this brings in. When I found these smoky black stemless wine glasses at Dollar Tree, I knew I needed to do another Cricut project with them for Halloween. So I picked out these shapes. Some of them were free in the Cricut design space and then the snakes, I actually made them myself and then imported them into the design space. I'll be sure to link this project below. I really, really loved this because I thought the skull shapes were really cool. And then you're bringing in the snakes and the moth shapes to create this really cool and different Halloween look that's maybe not your traditional motifs that you would think of. And it's just a really fun project. Cut it out using my Cricut Explore 2 and then began the lengthy process of weeding all of the vinyl. Let me tell you, this took forever, but it was strangely therapeutic as well to just clean out all of these shapes and the little tiny details that they had. Then it's on to the super easy part, which is just sticking down all these little vinyl shapes that we made. And I didn't really have a certain method or reasoning for this. I just placed the shapes kind of alternating their position and kind of a staggered look and making sure I didn't have like two or three skulls next to each other. I tried to vary up the different icons that I used going all the way around both glasses. And I absolutely love how this turned out and I regret not picking up two more of these stemless wine glasses to make a full set, but you know, just the two are absolutely perfect. to the description box and check out the other two videos that are part of this collab. I know you will love the projects that they came up with as well. And that's all I have for you in today's video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on my next one. Bye!